Our next organisation has been an architect for tomorrow since it was founded in 1945. And through its World Heritage Sites, it protects and preserves culture, heritage and diversity. That is our buildings, nature, art, our music, food and our literature. It also promotes world peace and security through international cooperation in education, arts, sciences and cultures. And if you've not already guessed, I'm of course talking about UNESCO. Did you know that as well as its World Heritage Sites, UNESCO also has created initiatives and programs to bridge the digital divide and global movements such as Education for All? To tell us more about how UNESCO is building a learning planet for living, we're going to hand the mic over now to two architects for tomorrow. Stefania Giannani, who's Assistant Director General for Education at UNESCO, and Francois Teddy, who's the founder and president of the Learning Planet Institute. Let's hear from each of them how they're building a learning planet for living. Welcome to LP Vision, Stefania and Francois. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Stefania, your floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, happy International Day for Education, first of all. Well, happy also to, to share with you a few thoughts of, on this uh, uh, interesting, uh, exciting idea that uh, we must be the architects uh, for tomorrow in these troubled times, in this uh, fast uh, changing landscape. Well, UNESCO actually uh, is the guardian of the world let's say, in a, the sentinel of the world, to put it very simply. And I think that the visionary program uh, to protect uh, the cultural heritage, which was launched in the 70s, is really kind of symbol, right? The flagship of the house uh, to demonstrate uh, how uh, it's important, uh, I would say dramatically relevant, especially now, to preserve what the past is uh, bringing. Uh, to us in terms of monuments, uh, the tangible heritage, as well as uh, what we call at UNESCO intangible heritage. That means uh, all different aspects of culture and cultural diversity. But now the question is a little bit different. Uh, what we have to do to shape the future in a different way, as the world needs a kind of different future. If you want to take seriously the climate action if you want to protect the planet and to preserve the planet for the future, we need a, a different generation of citizens. And uh, if you want to deal with technology in a way that is in the middle between the blind fanatism and uh, to be scared and ban technology from the classroom or other uh, aspects of our life, we have to build a new kind of citizenship on this planet. So. I see UNESCO as the place where architects for tomorrow, possibly new generations more than my generation, I don't know, but I would say all together, we can build the new vocabulary for this century. It's about inclusion versus uh, uh, inequalities and exclusion. It's about uh, universalism and uh, focusing on the common goods we have versus globalization as a process which actually already left behind so many in education and other sectors. It's actually about, uh, you know, uh, putting science, evidence, data at the core of policies and helping politicians and leaders to take very seriously messages and, uh, uh, you know, advices from scientists when it comes to health, pandemic, whatever the shock we are going to face, if any, ever. So to that end, I think that which is the best platform we have to put a kind of uh, uh, new legacy to bring to the future, to live them to the next generation. And that's what acting as architects uh, for the future, for tomorrow means to me. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, uh, Stefania. Thank you for these inspiring words. I think that indeed um, inviting, uh, as the UN Secretary General did it, he said, you know, there is four ways to interact with youth during the Transforming Education Summit that you uh, helped 
uh, organized uh, in 2022. Uh, his answer to the youth declaration on the future of education was very inspiring for me and I guess for many of the people around uh, because he said, you know, there's four ways to interact with the youth, ignore them, pretend to listen, dialogue or co-construct the future. And what you're talking about is, you know, if we want the youth of today to be the architect of the future, uh, we have to be in the force a category, obviously, given our many conversations that, you know, building together uh, a, a space, a new type of university for the new type of citizens, you know, what we call the planetizens, the citizens of the planet, aware of the planetary boundaries, and we would want to protect the commons that exist, but also create new commons and be recognized for this. So if we have a new generation of uh, architects of tomorrow uh, that starts getting um, credibility and recognition and can climb on the shoulders of giants of the previous generations, uh, you know, that's what a university of tomorrow could be. So it's the university, uh, not just the school of architecture, it's sort of the school of architecture of the world of tomorrow that we are talking about. No, thank you so much, uh, Francois, for also reminding us uh, to a very special moment in time last year, not now two years ago almost, uh, uh, when the Secretary General actually had this direct uh, conversation with young people. And I remember that one of them was very, you know, speaking loud about the role of young people sitting in the driving seat and not simply being part around the table, not simply being invited at the party as it usually happens, so to say. Well, uh, universities for sure are the place where uh, ideally this uh, might happen. Uh, universities are by definition and by tradition generating knowledge, transmitting knowledge to the next generation and bringing uh, innovation and bring in new systems, even if it's a very conservative uh, world. We must be very honest and transparent. I'm an academic by job in my life. And I know very well, I was a rector in my previous life and I know very well that, uh, but now it's a very special time. I think we can build on this uh, new awareness of the crucial role, once again, of science, education to, address effectively and differently the many challenges that we all have as citizens. So my dream is, uh, in a nutshell, to build together the university for citizens of this planet, which uh, must you know, benefit from all the tradition, all the expertise. Uh, uh, UNESCO is, a, for example, as many of you know, a, a fantastic, uh, visionary uh, uh, network launched 37 years ago, the, the chairs, the UNESCO chairs, and they are, you know, free to provide the organization with their thoughts, their ideas, and their inspiring points for the future. But maybe now we need a further step. We need to bring together uh, these chairs, but also, uh, uh, you know, enlarging the scope of this community. And uh, this uh, university, uh, I see as a kind of a reverse pyramid, right? So having uh, young people uh, on the top and uh, senior uh, leaders just kind of contributing to the um, system of knowledge uh, and innovation. So this is uh, at the very beginning of uh, 2024, a kind of... Uh, uh, wish uh, we can uh, we can share. Uh, what do you think? Oh, I love the idea, obviously. And as you know, we've uh, invited young people from all over the world uh, for a design challenge of uh, the Planet Design University. You know, what sort of university do they want for their future? A university that is not designed by you know the architect of yesterday. Uh, because universities have a long history, you know, starting with Bologna and uh, Sorbonne and, and Cambridge and Oxford and all others. Uh, but, you know, that is designed by the architects of the future that would want to create this. And by inviting uh, these young people, we got uh, tens of uh, amazing answers. And uh, we are really uh, committed. We'll give an award to the three best projects, but uh, you know, uh, without uh, unveiling everything yet, uh, we have discussed with every members of the jury and many partners, and all of them want to help not just the three best project, but the tens of projects we have to grow 
uh, and be taken one or two steps further so that ideally they can be offered to the world, say this September or certainly the next one, uh, so that we can help the, the students to co-create the planets and university that they want to become these planetary citizens aware of the planetary boundaries and where they can learn to build a new commons. They can nurture the natural commons uh, that you have also with the biodiversity sites at UNESCO. They can uh, learn to nurture the intellectual commons and, and also you know, co-create the digital commons of the future. And so by creating a space for the students that want to be these architects of tomorrow and want to uh, create the university uh, that will complement, as you were rightly fully saying, the national uh, universities that have co-evolved under you know, historical, geographical, political and financial constraints, and therefore are not necessarily addressing the planetary challenges of today. And so having a place where students can not just compete for yesterday's knowledge, but can uh, be invited to contribute to those challenges and co-construct the future is, I really think, something that is really uh, very inspiring uh, for uh, certainly this generation, but probably, as you rightfully said, uh, I think we can build this in an intergenerationally way. I think it's an excellent idea. I think, uh, you know, tomorrow is uh, it's a very good uh, uh, way to kick off uh, somehow and share this idea to a larger uh, audience. Uh, I would say that if UNESCO uh, would be included and uh, involved, as I hope, in this project, uh, inclusion will be very much at the core of this initiative. So many young people are out of the system. We have to keep in mind that there, there is in the world uh, uh, still uh, a huge higher education divide. So education, uh, higher education in the north of the world, in rich countries, uh, uh, covers some 74% uh, 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 of uh, the age population. When you move to the south, if you see the uh, African sub saharan region, we can see that unfortunately it's still a privilege. And uh, an open space to build uh, together uh, the common goods uh, for the future is really very much needed. And uh, it's at the, at the end of the day, a very concrete proposal we can, uh, we can work on. I, I'll be delighted. And I think we should be as inclusive as possible, as you rightfully said. Uh, to give an example, you know, it's only a few percent of those that are in a refugee camp that have access to a higher education. And we're talking about millions uh, of young people. Uh, but take Afghan women, you know, they can certainly not rely on their governments uh, for their education. Uh, so we have to, you know, find ways to deliver to those that have been historically or presently uh, deprived of their basic rights, uh, which is the right to learn to care for self, others and the planet. And, you know, one of the rights that you are rightfully pushing at UNESCO, the lifelong learning as a new right. Uh, I think learning to... Uh, care for self, others, and the planet should definitely be something that is offered to everyone at all ages. Absolutely. Uh, I was thinking uh, uh, while listening to you, Francois, that, um, you know, uh, when we talk about global citizenship, uh, when uh, the 2030 Agenda was launched, one, one of the new uh, inspiring concepts for education was and still is a global citizenship education. When we talk about this, we mean that uh, life must really be a learning process for all. And uh, more than ever now, it's a must, it's a duty for a, a society to make uh, this life-wide and lifelong learning process a right for all. And that's, of course, uh, the mission that UNESCO has, not an easy one, but uh, uh, we are very committed to move ahead uh, along these lines. So it's a pleasure to have you as a partner. I think uh, our time is up. Uh, thank you so much, Stefania. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And happy International Day for Education once again. You too.